minuscule or majuscule, minor or major, small or great, human rights are human rights. Allow me as well, my existence as well. As long as I don't hurt you, I don't harm you, and it's consensual, please give me the dignity of being the human being I am. Don't allow anybody to challenge your character or to insult you, give it back then and then. It's my life. How long am I going to be closeted? How long am I going to, you know, thirst for or, you know, crave for fresh air? I know what I am, but I can't accept the way I am. Just because the society has brought me that way. You know, they dragged me like an animal, put it in the Hounsala Jeep. They took me to the Kaban Barak police. And uh, there was a thing where, you know, I was being surrounded by uh, 15 cops. The year was 2009. A 150-year-old archaic law had been struck down by the Delhi High Court. The joy and relief was palpable. It was a massive shot in the arm for millions from the LGBT community. Who had been fighting for years to get what was rightfully theirs. They thronged to the streets, celebrating the change, even if it had come late in the day. But the euphoria soon crumbled, and in just four years, these individuals were dragged to square one. The top court of the country ruled homosexuality as a criminal offence, dealing a body blow to the community. The decision is a disgrace. It's a disgrace to law, constitutional principles, the ideals of the constitution such as liberty, dignity, equality, and in terms of the right to live a life, to be with the person you love, to express your love, it is a disaster and I would say particularly for people who haven't really come to terms with themselves who live in conservative towns, aspas, mufassal uh, uh, villages, things like that I think it's going to be a very very harmful judgment unless it's reversed. Why were they denied a right to life? Who gives the courts the right to recite a person's sexual orientation? Why should they be forced to bear the burden of their choice? They wanted answers. But unfortunately, the world's largest democracy had none. This law, 377, uh, goes against Article 14, 15 and 21. And it would have behooved uh, the two-person bench to have acknowledged that, rather than to make shifty arguments um, and rather illogical mm -hmm. and uh, intellectually hollow and emotionally shallow arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, not only emotionally, I would say morally shallow arguments. Mm -hmm to prop up an antiquated law. They met each other in 2009 on a social networking website. A year's long distance relationship convinced them that they belong together. They both have regular jobs, have hobbies that you and me would have, but they were cast as the other in society, simply because they were two men in love. Picking us up, moving. My mother just refuses to accept that this is the reality of her son. She believes that someone else made me gay. So it's difficult to talk about these issues to her. She will not bring it up. I don't want to bring it up because uh, it doesn't change her mind. For her, the word of her religion is more important than anything that I can say. So your body betrays your mind and that, that creates low self-esteem, that creates a sort of a pull in two different directions. And it's only very few people who get the love enough and acceptance enough around them to bring it again as a whole person. 
The judgment has left them shocked and numbed, hoping that the cruel order could somehow be wiped out. When I first came to came out to my mom, she said that, uh, you, that at that time the guy I was dating, she said that he made you gay, you can't be gay yourself. So, you know, there's no way in which she has accepted that this is something that you can be born with or this is something that you, you know, can't change about yourself. Um, it is this understanding that homosexuality is something that you practice or indulge in as a hobby and then it becomes an addiction or it becomes um, a, a habit of sorts. So there's no amount of science and there's no amount of uh, facts that you can give them. And when you're feminine and you're bullied, so essentially the other kids, some, and I think my teachers were good, but I think most kids were making me feel that I was a misfit. I did not belong there. So sometimes just, you know, spreading rumors about, I don't, like, I don't have male genitals. I'm actually a woman. Telling that to other people. And then other kids coming and asking me, oh, show us your genitals. I, I heard that you don't. It came to a point that in eighth standard, I was so harassed that I stopped going to school for a couple of days. And I couldn't tell anyone what was happening. The verdict is not just text in black and white. It affects real lives. It pushes these men and women back to the corner, where the prejudice, the harassment, is only a well-known fact. So I think in the context of the Supreme Court verdict that came out today, I, I, I think the point is not whether homosexuality is something that can be practiced or not. I think the real point of this discussion should be whether every single Indian owns his or her own bodies or not. Manavendra Singh Gohil, prince of the erstwhile state of Rajpipla, an icon for gay rights in India. All hell broke loose in the royal family when Gohil revealed his sexual orientation. There was an attempt by his parents to disinherit him after the revelation. He even married because he didn't know any better. But it ended in a divorce in 1992. And from here began a journey to end the prejudices. Family reacted again in a very ne a negative way. Uh, they already knew about my sexuality, uh, you can say four years prior to my coming out. But uh, they hadn't, didn't have that clue that one day I'm going to be public about it. Because so long as the royal secret was within the four walls of the palace, it was fine. But the moment it went out of the, uh, in the public, they were quite uh, upset and disturbed with the whole uh, uh, this, uh, act of mine. He fought on because he believed he had the right to make choices in life. When there is somebody with, to whom you can look forward to, some support uh, within, the com within the family or within the society, then things become easier. But in the absence of that, uh, it's very difficult for a child to understand what he or she is uh, facing. But there are thousands who are still battling the discrimination. Uh, just a, one more word about like basically when you come out to your parents, especially like in the cities, it might be a little more comfortable. But when you go to smaller towns or uh, uh, say even B town cities, where there's not enough information about LGBT rights, parents are completely clueless what it is about. and. For the child to make the parent understand is the most crucial thing. This is the IT capital of the country. Modern, progressive and said to be with the times. But that generalization couldn't be more far from the truth. In this very city of hope and aspiration, a transgender was asked to disrobe by policemen when they were informed of a sexual orientation. There was a situation where I was standing in a brigade or uh, St. Mark's Road, uh, where I was having an ice cream. Uh, so the police cop of Kaban Park was passing there. And he, when they saw me, they very intently said that I'm doing a sex work. So they dragged me in the jeep. They took me to the Kaban Park police station. I was catching their leg. I was begging them if I, if I recollect those things and there's the tears in my eyes. 
I, I said, sir, I'm not doing it, please, I came for ice cream thing, why you people are torturing me? No, 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 the, you people are doing only this. I said, I'm not doing, if I'm doing this work, yes, I'm accepted. I'm not doing, I was passing that side. So I took an ice cream, I went over there and, you know, they t dragged me like an animal, put it in the Hoysala jeep, they took me to the Kaban Barak police. And uh, there was a thing where, you know, I was being surrounded by uh, 15 cops. And you know, ACP Muniratnam Naidu, I, I think now he's an ACP, he made me nude. There was not a bit of cloth to cover my parts. The humiliation and the horror had left her scarred. And the wrath of her parents is just the tip of the iceberg of her trauma. In the same city not very far away, a software engineer and a civil service officer have been fighting a similar intolerance. They are like any other two people in a relationship, trying to make a living in the big city. It's my life, I have to somehow manage to find my space and then say, yeah, this is I am, this is how I am going to be forever. This is just, and I'm, I've got just one life. So and that was when I decided and I had, I was doing one of those, you know, uh, landmark courses when I came out to almost everybody and said that I'm gay and that's about it. So and that was the liberating moment from when, from then on I always have strived to be what I am. But none of this was considered while the so-called society questioned their choices. Here in Bangalore, um, a number of times with auto drivers, with policemen, how many times we have, we have to pay extra money to auto driver because we are gay. Yes, because for example, when you come out from the gay party, I mean, you know, which they also will be standing there, they know that we are gay and they will just call us, I mean, there are a lot of humiliating incidents, they're calling on the face like Chakka and, you know, Tum Lok Hijre Ho and all these things. You know how hurtful it is, I mean, when uh, somebody calls you all these things? Really want people to keep reiterating that the law doesn't... For these anguished voices, a radio station like this provides a platform to be heard, a source that gives them anonymity while letting them voice their pain. We know exactly that anyone could basically be arrested. We are not saying that conviction will happen because thankfully the, this, this, the, when we read the judgment we realized that conviction is also something that would require a lot of material evidence. It would require the, the proof of the act actually being committed. And, and that's really hard to prove. So I don't think a lot of convictions would have happened, but arrested is enough, right? So basically when you arrest someone saying that they've been uh, charged under 377, that, that's enough of a shame already. So that, that's the biggest fear that people have been having. We've been trying to change that. We've been trying to tell people that uh, they needn't be worried about this. They speak out without the fear of being judged. But unfortunately, in reality, such forums are rare and few. What has this got to do with Indian culture? Go to Konarak, go to Khajrao, read the poems of Mir, read the memoirs of Babur who established the Mughal Empire. We are a much more liberal culture than this kind of conservative Victorian morality that was forced on us. There are nations where gay marriages have been legalized. There are countries where two people of the same sex can freely and openly express their love and affection. There are cities where choosing your partner whether it's a man or a woman, is only an individual's prerogative. But sadly, none of this happens in India. Ironically, the world's largest democracy. The worst treatment day ever in my life that I had to go through the shock therapy. I see myself as part of the collective struggle that has been going on for the past two decades. I faced a lot of difficulties, obstacles, many a times.